a rail link between Johor Bahru and Singapore is back on track. Malaysia says that it will proceed to build the rapid transit system, otherwise known as the RTS link, but with proposed changes that will cut the projected cost by more than a third to about a billion Singapore dollars. One key feature of the revised plan, it centers on Bukit Chagar in Johor Bahru, which the rail link will connect with woodlands here in Singapore. Now, under the changes, the developer and owner of the land there will waive the land cost. Malaysia says that this, along with optimized costs in construction and rail systems, makes the project more financially viable. The revised terms are still being discussed with Singapore. Melissa Go has more. After months of review following suspension of the project in April, Malaysia has finally decided on the scope and the structure of the four-kilometer rapid transit system, or RTS, linking Johor Bahru to Singapore. Now, speaking after touring the custom, immigration and quarantine complex in Johor Bahru, together with cabinet ministers, the 94-year-old prime minister said his government has successfully reduced the cost by over a third from almost 1.2 billion U.S. dollars to just 760 million. And that's a saving of more than $400 million. Now, although the RTS, he said, won't solve the problem of motorcyclists. It will solve a little bit the problem of kesesakan uh, lalu lintas. Tetapi bila kita guna train, whereas uh, many from Johor go to Singapore with motorcycles, unless you can put the motorcycles on the train, now, Transport Minister Anthony Luke, meanwhile, attributed a saving primarily to the waiver of land cost by the developer and owner of the Bukit Chaga land, where the station in Johor Bahru is going to sit on. Now, belong to Sultan of Johor, the land is estimated to worth some $200 million. Also, by optimizing the cost of construction and changing and redesigning the system from mass rapid transit or MRT to light rail system or LRT, he said will lead to further costs. Saving. We propose some changes to the scope and the structure of the project so that that has been officially communicated to the Singapore government. So of course the Singapore government has to review it and they will take some time to study our proposal and what we will do is that we have a joint engineering study. So that will take a few months. More than 300,000 commuters cross the border each day. 250,000 use the causeway while the rest via the second link. Now, while it's unclear when the project will start work, he promised that the RTS will have the capacity to ferry 10,000 people per hour per direction. And the good news is the fare, he said, will be lower because of the reduction in costs. But the exact fare will have to be worked out together with Singapore. Now, both sides are now undertaking joint engineering studies to amend the original bilateral agreement signed in January last year to reflect the new development. Now, he hopes that the revised deal will be signed early next year. Now, apart from that, Minister looks at two more contracts, which is the concession agreement and the joint venture agreement between SMRT and Brasarana, both public transport operators, will have to be signed next year before the project can officially take off. Melissa Go, CNA, Johor Bahru.